Well, good morning. Uh, good morning, everyone. A warm welcome to you and to our online morning worship service, first of our Christmas-themed services. Uh, you're very welcome in joining us this morning. Let's begin by asking the Lord to bless us. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we're able to join together online uh, to worship you, to proclaim the amazingly good news of what you have done through your Son, Jesus Christ, and to be encouraged in our faith. Father, we pray that this morning you would bless your people, that you would help us to grow up as children of God. And Father, we pray as well for those watching this service who don't know you as their Father in heaven, who don't yet know Christ as their Saviour. Lord, we pray you would work in their hearts today and bring them into your family. Open their hearts to receive your love. Open their minds to understand the truth. Father, give them faith in Jesus Christ. And we pray this, Lord, for your glory, through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. 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 Well, later in the service, uh, I'm going to be teaching from the Bible, and we're going to be looking at the time when the shepherds hear the announcement of the angels that a Saviour has been born. So the, the songs we're going to sing during this service are going to be on that theme. So we're going to sing to start, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, Glory to the Newborn King. singing that, uh, that Christmas carol, some more Christmas carols to come later in the service. Just to say, as words of introduction, my name is Tom Magnus, I'm a pastor of Welshpool Community Church, 
and uh, we're continuing to live stream our services every Sunday morning. Uh, but it was great yesterday to have an in-person service in the town, uh, an encouragement to us as a church, and continue to pray that God <coughs> provides for us a place where we can regularly meet each, each weekend. And don't forget, if you're watching us on Facebook or YouTube, remember just to leave a comment if you can, just to say hi, just so we know after the service we can look through the comments and we can see uh, who's been watching, who's joined us this morning. It's an encouragement to us. Just to announce for this week, uh, as well as having our prayer meeting on Wednesday evening, don't forget we have our Saturday morning prayer meeting on Zoom. Uh, and that was a real encouragement yesterday, yesterday morning, as we joined together to pray. And later in the month, obviously, Christmas Day, we have services on Christmas Day. We have uh, a shorter than usual Christmas service in the morning at 10 o'clock. Uh, and also, we're going to be doing some carol singing in the afternoon at 4 o'clock. And both of those services are going to be live streamed on Christmas Day. So you're going to see our house on Christmas Day and uh, see our family. And I think James and Megan are joining us. Yeah. OK. So, uh, so we're going to be singing in the afternoon. And I hope you'll be able to join us again. That'll be live streamed on Facebook and on YouTube. OK. And talking of uh, things that you can watch online, we're going to watch a video now on the screen. And it's a video about the Potter's House CBO, a charity that is set up in Kenya, a charity that several people in the church are heavily involved in and help to run and oversee. So we're going to watch a video now that they've made just to show the work that they're doing in Kenya, particularly with families, with children who are living in poverty. Okay, so the camera's going to move to the screen and then hopefully the video should come up. We have come across families and children living with disabilities. Unfortunately, there is still a lot of stigma attached to disability here in Kenya. As an organization, we help facilitate support groups for those living with or caring for those living with disabilities. 
mwingine na hiyo ni bad kingena mimi ni mama wa watoto watatu ambao wanaishi na celebrity falsi saa hii tulianza pure watu wachache tulikuwa watu watano lakini tumefikia kiwango cha watu 40 na kitu ningependa kushukuru sana kwa kuwa hiyo kikundi nimekuelezesha tumekutana tukiwa wengi kuna wengine ambao walikuwa na watoto watoto wao lakini saa hizi wanaweza kuwatokeza hii kikundi tunakuwa tuki tukiadana every Tuesday baada ya wiki mbili alafu tukienda kwa hiyo kikundi kwa ninakuwa nikuwafundisha kuhusu celebrity falsi ndio wazao wengine wa watoto wao wanaona celebrity falsi iko kwa hiyo kikundi najitia moyo sana najitia moyo sana kwa kuwa kila mtu kwa kama shida tofauti tofauti sasa tukio kwa hiyo kikundi tunakuwa tuki yani mtu mwingine akikia shida ya mwingine anaona yake ni kadhalika What are Carl's Autonomous Support Group for Parents, where we discuss the issues they face and how to parent in a positive way. One of the major issues affecting many families in general is alcohol addiction. The Porter's House runs a support group for those struggling with such addiction. They meet once in a week and we have a professional counselor who comes in to take them through the process of rehabilitation. The greatest need of every individual is to know Jesus Christ our family, which is why our children's Bible club is so important. And when we meet with the parents, we take time to share God's word and pray with them. We have seen God touching and transforming lives here in Java, and by His grace, Okay, well that's a, that's a very helpful and informative video, just showing what uh, the sort of work that Potter's House is doing in Kenya, and we sometimes have workers from Potter's House joining with us on the live stream. So if you are joining with us from Kenya this morning. Beatrice is on. Oh, Beatrice is on, great. It's uh, lovely that you're able to join with us. We're so encouraged as a church that we're able to encourage you through this service and we're encouraged by the work that you're doing out there. We praise God for, for what he's establishing there in Kenya. And uh, if you want to know more about the Potter's House CBO, and it's important to add those three letters at the end, CBO, because there are a few other charities called the Potter's House popular name so just remember the Potter's House CBO uh, you can go to their Facebook page uh, you can also email them uh, info at the Potter's House dot the Potter's House CBO dot com so that's info at the Potter's House CBO dot com uh, and if you want to give financially to the work of the Potter's House uh, the website to go to is www dot paypal dot me that's me, paypal.me forward slash the Potter's House CBO. That's that it? it. That's it. Okay, there we go. We'll put the links um, on Facebook. Yeah, we'll, we'll put the links on Facebook. Mm. And, uh, and there may be other ways to, to find out about Potter's House in the coming weeks as they develop their, their presence online. Uh, and we'll let you know about that. Uh, but that, that video is on YouTube, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so that video is on we'll YouTube. We'll put a link in the lots of places. There we go. So thank you for that. And later on, I'm going to be leading us in prayer. And we'll be praying for the Potter's House uh, at that point. But we're going to sing now. And we're going to sing another, another well-known uh, Christmas carol. Uh, where is it? Silent night. Mm. Holy night. All is calm. All is bright.
the words out of the way. Okay. We're going to read from the Bible, from God's Word. And uh, Ruth doesn't know this, but she's going to come and read to us <laughs> from Matthew chapter 14, verse 22 to verse 33. And after Ruth's read to us, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to take a few minutes to speak to the children in particular. So that's Matthew 14, verse 22 to verse 33. Thank you. Good morning. So Matthew chapter 14, verse 22. <clears throat> Immediately, he, that is Jesus, made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat by this time was a long way from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, It's a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, it, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. And when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and, be and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when you, they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ruth. Right, let's put that there. I'm going to take a, a few minutes to speak to the children, so let's move this out of the way. I'm going to sit down. going to take a moment to think about the passage that Ruth read, but before we do that, we're going to sing a song, a song that reminds us why we give so much importance to the Bible so long after it was first written down. It's because God speaks to us through the Bible, tells us about himself and about how we can know him through Jesus Christ, his son. But before we sing that, we're going to need some help, aren't we? You know who I'm talking about? Donovan, the friendly local lion. So are we ready to shout his name? Here we go. Ready? Steady. Donovan! 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 Oh! 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 Hello! It's Jasmine, the rabbit. Is Donovan not here today? Oh dear. What's he doing? Oh, he's gone away for the weekend. Well, that's a shame that Donovan's not here, but... Can you stay and help us, Jasmine? Yeah, Jasmine can help us. Isn't that great? Thank you, Jasmine. So, we're going to sing. You know the actions to the song we're doing, Jasmine? Yes, you do. Brilliant. God says hello through the Bible. And remember, when I point to you, you have to say your name. And that's the same for everybody in the room. Okay, here we go. You ready? See if we can catch somebody out. He says hello to me. Whoa, whoa! Whoa, that was that almost blew my glasses off. That was so loud. Through the Bible. God says hello through the Bible. 
sound dampers in here, that was so loud. You shout your names at home, especially Ben. Right, Jasmine, let's have a look. Oh, now, before we have a look, actually, today is a bit of a special day. I don't suppose Donovan left anything for you to give to me, Jasmine? I mean, no. I'm, I suppose he probably didn't. It it doesn't matter. I'll we'll just uh, we'll just carry on. It doesn't matter really. It's a, you know it's sort of a special day. But um, anyway, where were? Oh wait a minute. What's 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 this? What's what's this? Oh, is this from Donovan? Ah, oh, he. Li it's my birthday, and look, he's wrapped it in special winter themed birthday wrapping paper. Look at this. Let's see what's in here, shall we? Let's open this up. I wonder what it could be. Is it a big bar of chocolate? I wonder. It's a bit too floppy to be a bar of chocolate. It's a book. Wow, look at this. Now this is an art book by a man called Rick Griffin. Now Rick Griffin, Jasmine, if you don't know, he was a man who lived a while ago and in the 1960s, so that's a long time ago, he was a surfer surfing on the waves. Ruth read about waves earlier, didn't she? Surfing on the waves. And he had a bit of a crazy life. But in 1970, so that was 50 years ago, 50 years ago, he put his faith in Jesus. And his life was changed. We've looked at that over the last couple of Sundays, Jasmine, haven't we? How when you put your faith in Jesus, it's like your life starts again. You've been born for a second time. And that's what happened to this man. And his life was changed, and his art was changed. In fact, there's a, oh, look at this, there's a, a bookmark in here. Oh, here's a picture. I don't know if you'll see this very well, don't worry if you can't, but it's, it's a painting he did based on the reading that Ruth just read about Jesus walking on the stormy waters out to his disciples on a boat. And the reason, Jasmine, that story is very special to me is because it was while I was reading that story, that, that account of what happened with Jesus and his disciples in that storm, that I was born again. I was sat on a bed, and I was just reading my Bible, that passage from Matthew, and I read about how Jesus went out on the surface of the stormy water out to his disciples who were in a boat. And I read about how Peter says, Lord, if it's you, then let me come out to you on the water. Let me walk on the water. And that's what he does. He begins to walk on top of the water. And I read about how Peter looked at the storm and was scared and began to sink. And he called out, Lord, save me. And when I was reading that, Jasmine, you know what happened? Let me give an illustration. Have you ever been to a beach and you get in the water and maybe you turn your back on the sea and you look at the, the beach and all of a sudden, a wave comes over and hits you on the back. What? Takes you by surprise. Maybe it's not happened to you, but I'm sure you've seen that happen to somebody. A wave just catches you off guard. Yeah? Well, that's sort of what happened to me when I was reading about the waves in Matthew 14. I read about Peter sinking. And all of a sudden, it was like God caught me off guard. And I realized I was just like Peter. I was in trouble. Not because of a stormy sea, but because of my sin. Because I failed God and let him down. And I needed his forgiveness. And in my heart, I called out those words of Peter to God. Lord, save me. And I was born again. And I had faith in Jesus. And he changed my life. Isn't that great? It's good and fun to celebrate your birthday. But it's really important to have that second birthday, to be born again because you put your faith in Jesus. So I'll tell you what, Jasmine, shall we pray? It's what we usually do with Donovan. We'll pray and ask God to help all of us today to have faith in Jesus. Let's, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus. 
that he lived an amazing life that showed he is the Son of God. We thank you that he died for our sins. And we thank you that he rose from the dead. He beat death and now lives in heaven. And one day will return and we will see him. So help us, Lord, to put our faith in Jesus, to trust him today and every day until he returns. Amen. 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 Jasmine, normally I'd ask Donovan what he's doing this week. I'm guessing he's told you what he's going to be doing. Ah, good, good. That's good to know. Uh, now, last Sunday, he was cheese making. I wonder if that's inspired him to do something else this, this week. What's, what's he going to be doing? Oh, well, that sounds interesting. Chiropody. Well, that's fantastic. Thank you, Jasmine. It hasn't Jasmine been a great help today, a substitute for Donovan? Let's hope he'll be back next week, but who knows, he might be on long travels. But hopefully he'll be back next week, won't he? Yes, great. Well, thank you, Jasmine. Say goodbye to Jasmine, everyone. Bye, Jasmine. Bye-bye, bye. Jasmine. Say bye to the children. Thank you. We'll see you again sometime. There we go. Fantastic. Well, we're going to sing. Get this uh, wrapping paper out of the way. There we go. We're going to sing. Uh, and this is... Uh, this is a children's Christmas song, I think. Sometimes called the Calypso Carol. Oh, put that back on. See him lying on a bed of straw, a drafty stable with an open door. Mary cradling the babe she bore, the Prince of Glory is his name. Oh, now carry me to Bethlehem to see the Lord of Love again. Just as poor as was the stable then, the Prince of Glory, when he came. from verse 1 to verse 20. This is the passage I'll be teaching from uh, a little later in the service. You'll find it helpful, therefore, to have a Bible open as a passage in front of you or have it on your mobile device. So this is God's Word. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. 
and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. So reads God's word. But before we turn to that passage again and I teach from that passage, I'm going to lead us in prayer. And uh, normally we have a couple of points in the prayer where we pause, allow people at home time to pray for people they're aware of, situations they're aware of. But today we're not going to do that. Probably won't be doing that over these Christmas services. I'm just going to lead us in prayer now. So let's, uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. Uh, with awe in our hearts, uh, recognising your greatness, recognising your majesty. Father, we look across your creation and we can see your immense power. And we also see, Lord, your immense creativity when we consider the beauty of this world, the beauty of this universe. Lord, we are uh, amazed and we recognise God, you are above all others, with more authority than any other has. And Father, we recognise as well that you are holy this morning. Lord, we know that within you there is no sin, there is no evil. Father, we know that you are pure and true, that you keep all of your promises. And Lord, we're grateful for that, because we also recognise, Father, our own weakness and sin. Lord, we know that we have, we have sinned before you. And Father, we pray for your forgiveness. Grateful, Lord, for the promises that you have made, which Christ, your Son, has fulfilled. We thank you, Father, that he came to rescue us from our sins. And we pray as we did earlier, Lord, we pray that you'd help us, each one of us, to have faith in Christ as our Saviour. We thank you, Lord, that he carried in his body on the cross our sins and paid the full price. We thank you for his cry just before he died. It is finished. But we thank you as well, Lord, that on the third day he rose from the dead. Your testimony to the world that you accepted his death in our place, that he had paid the full price. Father, we thank you for the assurance and peace we have when we trust Jesus as our Saviour. Mm. We thank you, Lord, that we know where we're going. 
if we follow Christ. We know that he has led the way past the grave into heaven. We thank you that one day we too will have an empty grave. That one day Christ will return and we will rise to be with him, transformed so that we can live immortal lives in your kingdom. We thank you, Lord, for that assurance, for that comfort as we live in a world that is always changing. But we thank you, Lord, that even in this difficult world, cursed by sin, we still experience your daily blessings. We thank you, Father, for all that you provide for us each day. And we pray, Lord, that you would continue to provide for our needs. Father, please give us all that we need in order to live as your children in this world. We thank you, Father, for that gift of yesterday, being able to meet together as your people. And Lord, we pray you would give us wisdom as we seek to continue in some way to meet together. And Lord, we pray also that you would provide for us a meeting place where we can gather on a weekly basis. Lord, we put that need in your hands. We trust you for it, Father. We trust that you will continue to build your church here in Welshpool. And Lord, we thank you for the work that we've seen you establish in Kenya. Lord, we thank you for the encouragement of that video that we watched earlier. For the families that are being helped by Potter's House CBO. For the children being helped. Lord, we thank you for the, for the Bible club that's been running over recent months. And Lord, we pray for those boys who are attending the club. Lord, we pray that you would... that there would be eternal fruit in their lives from that work. And Father, we pray for those who work for the charity. Lord, please protect them, bless them. And we pray, Father, you would provide for them all the resources that they need to work for your glory. We thank you as a church as well, Lord, for the news this week of the Hawthorne family returning to Zambia. We thank you for their safe journey. And Lord, we pray for the work of the Proclamation Institute in Zambia, seeking to teach your people how to handle your word so that they can teach others. Lord, please bless that work. And Father, we think now as well of this church and of the people who are committed to this church. Lord, we pray particularly for those who are unwell at this time. Lord, you know who they are. And Father, we pray that they would have peace, knowing that you are with them. And we pray, Father, that they would experience your daily mercies and your sustaining grace. And Lord, we pray as well that you would continue to help us, as individuals and as a church, to grow up as children of God to grow up spiritually. We thank you that we have been born again and have a new spiritual life. Help that life to mature, Lord. Help us to grow. And Father, as we grow, we pray that the light of the gospel would shine more brightly in this town and in the surrounding community. Lord, we pray especially at this time of year when people's attention is drawn more closely to Christ and in particular to his birth. Father, we pray that many would explore why he came, what he did through his life, his death, and his resurrection, so that they would put their faith in him and be ready for his return. Father, please bless the proclamation of the gospel over these coming weeks, in this town, in the surrounding communities, but also, Lord, in our nation and around the world. We pray that during this time when many are aware of their frailty, of how quickly things can be taken from us, Father, we pray that many would look for the rock to build their lives upon, would look for a refuge that is eternally safe. We pray that many would put faith in Jesus Christ and trust him as their saviour and their Lord. Father, we recognise you are a faithful God 
you are holy and pure and we can trust you completely. And so, Lord, in all that we pray, we ask that your will would be done. And we pray this through Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. Amen. I'm going to speak from God's Word now. I'm going to teach. So I'm going to move over here. I'm going to move the cameras. And uh, as usual, thank you for your patience during this live stream. Let me grab my water. Right there. said we're going to be looking at Luke chapter 2 and particularly verse 8 to verse 20. chapter 2, verse 8 to verse 20, and the title of the message is A Small Gathering for a Big Event. We're approaching Christmas, and it feels unlike any Christmas I've experienced before. We're all aware of the various restrictions that we've been under for the last nine or so months, and that we continue to be under. Yesterday we had our first indoor, in-person church service since lockdown began. And it was encouraging, yet also quite novel. And a bit unusual, with people wearing face masks and the notices mainly consisting of health and safety guidelines. <laughs> One of the strange things we've experienced this year is the restriction on numbers of people attending special occasions. For example, my nephew got married earlier this year and we watched the occasion online, as did many others, because the number of people attending had to be kept really low. And that's sort of the role we play when we read the account of the shepherds at the birth of Jesus. We might feel a bit like online viewers of a big event where there was only a small gathering. But what makes the birth of Jesus such a big event that we remember it around the world 2,000 years or so after it happened? The shepherds, we're told in verse 8, were keeping watch over their flock by night and suddenly there's a huge announcement. Not on the TV, but in the sky. An angel appears with a message and we know who the message is from because of how it's packaged. We're told that the glory of the Lord shone around them. Verse 9. This was a message that came with God's seal of approval. And that's why the shepherds, we're told, were filled with great fear. They were afraid of what this might mean. Like when a boss walks into the office and they say they have an announcement to make. But the announcement isn't bad news. In fact, it's the opposite. The angel tells them not to be afraid. He has brought, brought good news of great joy. Not just for them, but for all the people. And in verse 11, we hear the good news. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour who is Christ we're given three titles for him. First, he's a saviour. He's going to rescue people. His birth, therefore, is like a fireman arriving at a burning house or a doctor arriving at the scene of an accident. A sense of anticipation begins to rise. The thrill of knowing that someone might be rescued. But rescued from what? The angel says that this birth is good news for all the people. 
But what danger are all the people in? Well, one answer we might give today is simply a pandemic. We are in no doubt today that there can be things that are dangerous for everyone, no matter who they are or where they're from. But what danger was this baby sent to rescue us from? Well, we look to another angelic message to find the answer. The message brought by an angel to Joseph. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, we read that Mary will bear a son. That's what the angel says to Joseph. And you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So the answer is very simple. This baby, whose name, Jesus, means rescuer, will rescue people from their sins. So what is sin? As an illustration, you've probably met people, you might be one of them, who refer to their teenage years as their rebellious phase. A phase in life when they try to break free of authority and in particular live in opposition to their parents' wishes. But imagine if those parents were royalty, a king and a queen. Suddenly, rebellion starts to become treason because of the level of authority being opposed. Sin is a word that describes our rebellion against God, against the highest authority that there is in the universe. So it's like treason, but on a cosmic scale. That's why sin is so significant. While the, why the final punishment for sin is eternal. And why the birth of Jesus, therefore, is such good news. Good news for all the people, because we've all sinned. We've all tried to oppose God's wishes. And we all, therefore, need rescuing. The second title this baby is given is Christ. And that title simply means anointed or chosen one. Another word uh, that means the same thing is Messiah. And the Jewish people used that name to refer to the person that God had promised to send who would establish God's kingdom forever, where God's people would live in perfect peace with God. In their history, recorded in the Old Testament, there were lots of examples of people anointed to serve God in a special way. Sometimes kings were anointed to lead the people in following what God had commanded. Sometimes priests were anointed, leading people in their worship of God. And lastly, sometimes prophets were anointed, being set apart to bring God's message to his people. But Jesus would be different to all of these others because he would be better than all of these others. He would be a better king. The problem with kings in the Old Testament was that they were either bad kings who lived too long or good kings who didn't live long enough. But Jesus came to be an always good and always living king. He would defeat sin and he would even defeat death. Jesus would be a better prophet. He wouldn't just bring God's message to the people. He would be the message. God's eternal word would become flesh. God's rescue promises would become a person. In Jesus, we find the perfect representation of God as man completely sin-free and utterly reliable. And Jesus would be a better priest. Priests in the Old Testament would offer sacrifices for sin. It was like the sins of the people being placed on an animal and that animal would die instead of them. But because people kept on sinning, the priest had to keep on making sacrifices. But Jesus would come to offer just one sacrifice, 
a sacrifice capable of taking away sins once for all. And that sacrifice would be himself. As the sin-free, always good king, he was able to carry the sins of others and offer his life in their place. That is what he does when he dies on the cross. But as the always living king, he would go on to defeat death and rise on the third day to a life that would be beyond death's reach forever. So he is a saviour and the Christ and his third title is the Lord. When someone is referred to as a Lord today, we will probably assume that it is a title they inherited or that they were given a life peerage by the Queen. One of the programmes we enjoy watching as a family is The Apprentice. And on that programme, there's usually a moment when the hopeful entrepreneurs are gathered together and they say in unison, hello, Lord Sugar. Because their potential investor, Alan Sugar, was given a life peerage by the Queen. But Jesus doesn't become a Lord. At his birth, he is announced as the Lord. It is a title that already belongs to him, and it is a title that tells us, therefore, who he already is. Now, in the Old Testament, the title, the Lord, is often used to describe God. In fact, God's name in Hebrew, which most people pronounce as Yahweh or Jehovah, was considered by the Jews to be too holy to even be spoken. And so the title Lord was used in its place so that there wouldn't be a silence when reading a passage of scripture that contained God's name. So when you read the Old Testament in an English language Bible and you see the word Lord in capital letters, every letter in capitals, it's actually a translation of the name Yahweh. So those are two very different types of Lord, aren't they? One is man-made and limited in power, kind of lords that people are today. But the other, the Lord that the God, God is, the other is uncreated and unlimited in power. So the question is, what type of Lord is Jesus? Well, we find the answer to that question by asking a slightly different question, and it's this. Are any of the passages about the Lord Yahweh in the Old Testament applied directly to Jesus in the New Testament? And the answer is yes. And one example is in the prophecy of Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 3. We read these words. A voice cries, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. And that's Lord with capital letters, so that is God. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Now at that time, the people of God were in exile, far away from their homeland. And Isaiah is the voice that is crying out to them. He speaks to them as if they're a big crowd gathered together. And he tells them to clear a path for God to come through. Because he's going to lead them home. He's going to bring their exile to an end. We then find Isaiah's words repeated in the New Testament, many centuries later. But now, John the Baptist is the voice crying out, and the one he's announcing is Jesus Christ. Jesus is the Lord with capital letters. He is a man, yet he is also the Lord God. Now when you put all of those three titles together, that's a lot to take in. And it's all good news, and it's for all the people. This is, without doubt, a big event. So what will this Saviour, this Christ, this Lord, look like? The angel says, You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. A manger was a a pig's feeding trough. Now that doesn't really sound like a big event. 
as an illustration, I remember when the Queen visited Welshpool about ten, ten years ago or so. Of course, she walked down the high street and visited places of significance and crowds filled the, the pavements, cheering and waving flags. It would have been very different if she had just gone to the frozen food section of Aldi's. <laughs> but that's the kind of image we're given by the angel. The saviour has been born and you'll find him lying in a pig's feeding trough. Mm. Now we can be sure this is a big event because we then read of possibly the world's first ever flash mob as the sky is suddenly filled with angels singing praise to God, <laughs> congratulating God the Father at the birth of his son. This is a big event. The rescuer that we all need has been born. But it's nothing like the kind of big event we're used to. It's more like the kind of big event we've had to get used to this year. Mm. Understated and with only a small gathering. Of course, when it's a big event, but you can only have a small gathering, the challenge is knowing who to invite. Invitations have to be prioritised in order. So if someone is invited, they can be sure that they must be important in some way to the one who's inviting them. And God sent an invitation to this group of shepherds. Mm -hmm. In what way could they be important to him? In New Testament days, shepherds were not among the movers and shakers. They worked terrible hours. We find these shepherds working the night shift and in a dirt ridden environment. They wouldn't have been rich or powerful. And back then they wouldn't have been well educated nor well connected. These are people who would have been looked down on by others. Why would they be important to God? Why would God want them to be among the first people to greet his son? Again, the person to ask is Jesus himself when he's an adult. There's another event, this time a meal, where people ask, why is Jesus spending time with those people? Mm. We read about it in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 9, verse 10 to 13. I'm going to read that now. As Jesus reclined at table in the house, and that's how people used to eat back then, reclining on their side, behold, Many tax collectors and sinners came and were reclining with Jesus and his disciples. Tax collectors and sinners. So these were also people that were looked down on by others. And when the Pharisees, the religious authorities, saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard it, he said, Those who are well have no need of a doctor for those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. So what's Jesus saying? That the Pharisees weren't sinners? Well, that can't be the case. Firstly, we know that everyone has sinned and needs the rescue that Jesus offers. And secondly, Jesus makes it very clear at other times that the Pharisees were far more into themselves than they were into God. They definitely had not got it all right. Jesus is simply telling the people what the angel told Joseph. He had come to save sinners. So the question shouldn't really be, why is he eating with those people? Instead, the question should be, why aren't the Pharisees eating with him? Why don't they want to sit at the table? The answer is simple. They thought they were too good to need Jesus to rescue them. That was how they were rebelling against God. By refusing to accept a rescue on his terms. We find a similar situation when Jesus speaks to wealthy people. And he says that, it is hard for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. 
He's not saying that having money is bad, but simply that those who believe they are self-sufficient will be reluctant to accept that they need a rescuer. Mm. That's why in the New Testament, we often find it is the lowest people in society who come to Jesus and why we find shepherds being invited to the birth of the greatest ever king. God wants people to be saved from their cosmic treason against him, to be set free from that eternal guilty verdict. But to accept that offer of a rescuer, we have to put aside any delusions of grandeur. You have to be willing not just to kneel in the dirt at the side of a manger, but to kneel at the foot of the cross and admit that you've sinned and that you need to be saved by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ in your place. But even as we humble ourselves before God and ask his son, Jesus, the Christ, to save us, we are exalted and raised up. For God doesn't only want to save us from something, he wants to save us for something. When we trust Jesus as the one to rescue us from our sins, our relationship with God is changed. We are brought out of rebellion and into adoption. We are now able to call him our Father in heaven, to know that we are children of God. And the Spirit of God comes to live in us and begins to change us from the inside out, helping us to grasp all that Jesus has rescued us from and rescued us for. And just as Jesus is a better priest and a better prophet and a better king than any other, so God is a better father than any other. Every human father fails in some respect, but God never fails his children. He has a genuinely loving and good plan for his adopted family. And the rescuer he has sent, Jesus Christ, will make sure that every part of that plan reaches completion, including the work that God has begun in us. So when the shepherds eventually go back to their fields and to their flocks in verse 20, we read that they are glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. They had heard the good news. They had believed and obeyed it, and it left them praising God. Today, if you feel like you're truly hearing the gospel, the good news about Jesus, for the first time, if you know that right now, it's no longer like you're watching from a distance, but God is speaking to your heart, I call you to believe and obey the gospel. Put your faith in Jesus Christ. Trust him as the one who has died for your sins. Believe that he has risen in victory over death and give praise to God for what he has done through the Saviour who is Christ the Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the wonder of the birth of Christ, man and God, living with us. And we thank you, Lord, for that good news that the angel announced. A Saviour has been born, who is Christ the Lord. And we thank you that that is still good news today, because of his victory over death. The Saviour still lives. The Saviour still rescues. Father, help us to have faith in Christ. Help us to trust him as the one who died for us, as the one who rose from the dead. And Father, we thank you for the promise one day, if our faith is in him, we will see him face to face and give him the glory. Amen. 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 We're going to sing one more uh, Christmas hymn. So I'm going to move over here.
cameras will move a bit, the words will be on screen uh, before we bring the service to a close. We're going to sing, Lord, you are rich beyond all splendor, yet for love's sake became so poor. Leaving your throne in glad surrender, sapphire paved courts for stable floor. Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. 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 Well, thank you for joining with us uh, this morning. I trust that you'll know the Lord's guiding hand and help in the coming days. He is a good God and faithful. And do join us again next Sunday at uh, half past ten as we have another live streamed worship service. And uh, so now while I play the guitar, uh, we're just going to bring the live stream to a close.